Hey, hi all. In this video, we will discuss about validation rules. Uh, so, what is validation rule and how we can use validation tool uh, so that we, we will not get the raw data in our database and we will uh, have some set of standards like uh, if it's a name field, then the characters are uh, allowed in that particular field. No numeric value can, uh, can be entered in that particular field. So in that manner, we will de we define some of the validation rules. So it just validates the input from the user, and then it checks if it meets the criteria of that particular validation rule. Then it will throw that particular error message, and uh, if there is no if the criteria is not met, then it will just go to the uh, next iteration or iteration of that particular uh, uh, flow that is uh, life cycle. First, the standard validation rules will run, then a custom validation rules will run, and then uh, your assignment rules, auto response rules, and escalation rules, all that will run. So, first of all, what is validation rule? Uh, it just verifies the data which a user enters. It meets the standards you specify for that particular record that a user is trying to save into the database. If that is correct or that doesn't meet any criteria of that validation rule then you can save that record to the database otherwise it will throw an error and then you have to clarify or you have to rectify that error then only you will be able to uh, save that particular record in the database next uh, how salesforce process validation rules so first whenever you click on save it runs validation rules if uh, it checks if there if it doesn't meet any one of the validation rule criteria then it uh, goes to the next one that is assignment rules or response rules and workflow rules and escalation rules so then the whole next set of operations or next set of uh, iterations will take place if there is any error or if there is any criteria uh, if the criteria is met in uh, for that particular field in, so in any one of the validation rules uh, then it will throw an error message Then you have to just rectify that particular thing from that record then you will be able to save the uh, that record into database and why we have validation rules in place in salesforce because we many of the times business has some requirement that, uh, when the country will be india then only the indian states should be allowed to selected or allowed to be selected then we can have a validation rule and in the same manner uh, if if you have uh, this company name or uh, if your uh, first name or last name has some numeric value or you are uh, by mistakenly you have entered some numeric value in that particular first name or last name field then you can have a validation rule that uh, this particular field can only be saved if it has all the characters if it is a, it if it has a numeric value then uh, it is not allowed to save so in that manner uh, the error messages should be user friendly so the users can just read it and they can make the changes and they can uh, save the record in the database without any issue because if you will uh, if you will have some uh, complex error messages or uh, if you have some uh, there there are uh, some error messages which are like uh, technol technology terms or tech terms in that particular messages uh, error messages so they will just come uh, to the uh, what i can say uh, system administrator and they will just check with the team like if, if, if it is caused due to that particular uh, thing like i was trying to save that particular record and then this error was coming up so what we can do best to resolve it so it's always the best practice to have user-friendly error messages so that will be easy to read and easy to understand and easy to react or change the data entry next validation rule field so there are some set of fields like when we create a validation so the first is the name so the so what will be your uh, names for a uh, for an example we have account check so we have account check and then the active this is a checkbox field if this box is checked then only that particular validation rule will fire if it is unchecked that means the particular validation rule is inactive the description then it defines like why this particular validation rule was written and uh, you can specify uh, in short 
or in short means like this description is helpful in future when you are not with them uh, with that particular organization when someone is checking uh, an error or an issue which is related to that validation rule so then uh, he or she can relate like why this particular validation rule was written or uh, what it does it is specified in that formula also but if it is a complex formula then it is a bit uh, hard uh, to get to that thing so it will be easy uh, for a new person to just read the description and okay fine this this is how it will work and then uh, he or she can check error condition formula so this is the main thing where we define the criteria or uh, our rule error rule like when the error will fire then we have the main thing one more thing main thing that is error messages it should be user friendly second easily readable so the user can easily make the changes to the particular field and they can save the record in the database then where you want the error location there are two things at the top of the page or be, uh, below that particular field so if you select any field here so you will get an error message below that particular field if you select a uh, top of the page then uh, you will get the at the top of the page you will get that particular error message so this is a just screen when you try to create a new validation rule so as you can see the this is the rule name then this is the active or the uh, inactive checkbox so if it is active the particular validation rule will uh, be active in the system when you create a new validation rule by default this particular checkbox is checked then you can add description here and then uh, you have insert field you can click on this and you can insert the fields which you want then operators uh, it will be equal to plus or uh, less than greater than all the operators will be there there are some function uh, these are some functions so as you can see <laughs> there are some functions to it uh, so there it is all function categories then there are logical functions math function so according to that according to your requirement you can check for that and uh, you can just uh, add that particular function or you can use that particular function according to your requirement then uh, we have a check syntax check uh, button you can just click on that and then you can verify whatever formula you have written in this particular thing whether it is uh, it is prop means like the syntax is proper or not if it is not then there will be error message if it is yes then uh, a green message will be a, uh, a message in green uh, letters will be there and uh, then you can specify the error message like when the this criteria meets then what will be the error message so for an example please select company checkbox so we can have like please select company checkbox so this particular this criteria has been oh sorry this criteria has been met and uh, we forgot to select the company checkbox then we will get this error message please select company checkbox if we select this company checkbox then this error will wipe off and uh, we can save the record now this is the error location which we are talking about uh, in the last slide so this is the error location it, it can be top of page or it can be below any or it can be uh, on any field regarding which you have written this particular criteria so for an example in this particular scenario we are checking uh, we are checking for company field so company checkbox field so we can select the company name or we can select company in that particular field in this in this we can select company so the error message will be this error message will be below this field that is checkbox is this and then we will have company so in that manner it will be easy for you to just go click on this particular error message it will be a hyperlink just click on that and you will be moved to this particular field you will just mark them checked according to your criteria and then you will save the record it will be saved to the database so this is all set about a uh, validation rule so there are some important considerations about validation rule whenever you are implementing a new validation rule you have to just 
ask some questions to yourself while implementing that like what should be the criteria for that because it it should not be open ended it should be it, it should be very minimized or it should be very optimized to a level like you have to check all the things like uh, for an example you you want to write a validation rule on accounts so on which type of accounts you want a validation rule so it might be a particular record type on which you want to uh, have a validation rule then you have to specify that okay fine if the record type of that particular account is this if the account uh, if the account uh, this uh, account industry industry is a field on account if the account industry is this and the record type is this and if the company checkbox field is not checked at that time only i want this validation rule or i want this validation uh, error message to be there on the screen so in that manner you have to just ask the question so you can just narrow it down and you can uh, easily write a proper validation rule otherwise it will fail uh, it will fail other records which are not related to that record type because you have not defined the record type the validation rule will run for all the record types right and uh, there are, there is one more consideration whenever you are implementing a validation rule you have to just uh, run all the test classes to just check of that particular object to just to check like if, if uh, any one of the um, test classes uh, classes are failing due to that particular validation rule then you have to make the test data according to that validation rule and then you have to just uh, you have to just do your code coverage according to that and uh, whenever you are doing a validation rule implementation or a new validation rule you are implementing in the system you have to just make sure that all the legacy records are updated accordingly because if all the records or all the legacy records are not updated then might be you have a bad job or you have any automation or you have any scheduled flows or something like that that will run after two months or after a particular a date or a particular schedule then but then that uh, validation rule criteria will satisfy and you will get they will throw an error uh, the field you are updating or the records you are creating or deleting they will not take place so that uh, that are some of the things you have to take into consideration uh, uh, yeah thank you that's all for the validation rules thank you in the uh, in the next set of videos we will just go through like uh, what are the different functions available uh, so this this uh, so when you just click on this particular all function category so there are some function logical methods uh, so we will just go one by one to each and every function and what it does and in that manner uh, we will just cover more about like uh, how we can use validation rules and how we can add a criteria and we can narrow it down so in, in the next set of videos we will cover that thank you have a nice day